Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have a total of six coastal or beach DIYs for you, all using supplies from the Dollar Tree, the Shore Living Line that they have there, and um, I really had a great time putting these pieces together and I can't wait to show you how I did it. So this is the last one and let's get started. The first one, I wanted to remake this little beach canvas sign and this beach sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. I like the little um, frame. It is totally my style and I like the little metal beach word. So I'm gonna go ahead and salvage that by using some heat and like one of those little Cricut tools to lift that off carefully without damaging the back too much there. It popped off pretty easily. It was only glued down in like two spots. And what I wanna do is use this beach canvas from the Dollar Tree to cover that. Now, I know you're thinking it's too small, but I'm thinking that with the fabric on the sides that it might be big enough. So I'm gonna have to be very careful when I take this canvas apart. So I tried using like a staple removal or like um, pliers to like get the staples out. But then I realized, yeah, I really have to cut it. So I'm just gonna carefully um, try to cut that. I don't want, I wanna save the fabric on the side. Normally I don't really care when I'm taking one of these things apart but I need every inch of that fabric. So I'm just cutting with my X-Acto knife like just outside the staples, trying to get most of the image intact. Then I realized that the little razor blade was actually the best way to get those staples out. And we have a canvas. I really love this image. It really reminds me of the beach here where I live. And so I'm just trying to smooth that out. In hindsight, I'm wondering if I should have ironed it. It might have been easier to get those wrinkles out a little bit. And now I can start trimming it. I found that it was almost the same side that if you cut around um, the, where it like overlapped the bottom of the canvas. And so I cut the bottom in a straight line and then I'm just gonna lay it on there and use my razor blade so I can get an exact cut of where the top needs to be. And just trimming that up. And you, as you can see, I like need like all of it. <laughs> but it worked to make it bigger to cover this. Um, I like a framed image better than I like just the plain canvases. And I thought this would be a fun way to kind of combine these two um, Dollar Tree projects together into one beautiful beachy project. So once I got it cut out, I am gonna go in and paint it. The reason why I'm painting it is because when I laid the canvas on there, even though the canvas is thick, I could slightly see the writing through there and I don't want that. So I'm not taping it off or anything. I'm just going over the whole thing with some ivory acrylic and just kind of doing a sloppy coat. Um, I just don't want those words to show through. Otherwise, definitely doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm just gonna use a wipe to try to get any of the paint off the frame. I find that easier than taping, or maybe I'm just in a hurry, I don't know. <laughs> now I'm gonna go in with Mod Podge and do a thick, thick coat of Mod Podge. Since this canvas is like kinda heavy, it's gonna require a lot of glue, and um, gluing it on top is not really gonna you know, soak through the fabric because it's kind of a sealed canvas. So once I get it on there, I am going over with a baby wipe to kind of smooth it down to try to get all of those edges down and the folds like smoothed out. That's when I realized I probably should have ironed it a little bit, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use some extra Mod Podge 
on the corners to make sure that those lay flat. And I'm gonna decorate at least three of these corners to kind of cover that up, the little wrinkles there in the corner, but I'm trying to get it down like just as smooth as I can. And I find the baby wipe works perfectly to smooth it down because it kind of takes off that excess glue as well, but then a scraper um, worked nicely too. Now you can see some imperfections there on my cut and um, they don't go perfectly to the edges. So to kind of fill that seam, I thought I would use some of this twine. This is kind of that thicker twine from Walmart. It kind of comes out kind of ragged like that. So, um, or maybe it's because I'm at the end of the roll, but I'm gonna go in with just some, a lighter and burn off the excess fibers to kind of clean those up a bit because they were pretty hairy looking. And I have one of those for each side of our little beach canvas. And I am using my heat gun to try to help dry that a little bit. And then I am gonna go over the top with Mod Podge just to try to help seal it down and make sure that this piece stays together. And it, uh, it makes it kind of look, you know, more like a hand painted sign too, cause you're gonna see all your like brush marks and stuff like that. Now we're gonna go in and glue down the little um, twine borders. Just simply using some hot glue and gonna go around all four sides. And that gave the perfect like kind of border. It's very thin, but it also gives you that beachy coastal touch and it makes um, it look like a perfect um, cut. I wasn't sure when I started this project if I was gonna be able to get it to work. Um, if you had a smaller frame, it would be even easier because you wouldn't have to worry about getting every inch. But I hope you found some of these beach canvases. They are so pretty. Now with the little beach word, I thought we could make this look like wood. So to do that, I'm just mixing a little bit of ivory acrylic paint together with some um, Antique Wax by Waverly to give me this beautiful uh, wood color and just doing one coat with a chunky brush, kind of leaving some of the metal exposed to kind of give me like a faux wood grain on the little beach word. And we are just gonna attach that to our canvas. And I'm just gonna use hot glue and kind of like they had it glued on before, just a little bit on each side. And I'm gonna kind of set it here like kind of in the blue portion of the painting so that it's easy to read. Now the hanger they put on there like totally crooked and so I'm gonna fix that. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the hanger that was on there before. And then I have that little sawtooth hanger that um, I took off the canvas. So I'm just gonna use my ruler. That frame is definitely thick enough to do one of these like little tap in sawtooth hangers. And so I'm just gonna tap that in with my hanger and we'll have a way to hang this centered cause they were way off. Now I thought I needed a little something something. So I'm gonna use some of these seashells from the Dollar Tree. I picked out a beautiful variety, all different colors. I'm gonna kind of um, glue these down first to kind of center them out. And then I'll go back and glue in the like super pretty ones in between. And I thought this gave the perfect final touch to this project. I thought about putting some sand down there, but then I thought that it wasn't really necessary. The painting is so pretty on its own and these seashells really make it look super beachy. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so beautiful. And I love combining the two projects together. Now I thought it needed just a little another detail. And so I'm gonna use one of these bags from the Dollar Tree to make a little faux fishnet. I like this better than the fishnet they have at the Dollar Tree because it's way smaller. Um, I just have to cut around the pink parts and then I am just cutting that off the straps and the handle of the bag. And that's kind of what I had left over from another DIY. I'm just gonna kind of drape it over like one corner like that. And that's where you can see I got like three of the four corners covered with something. 
And then I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue to kind of tack it down on the back of the sign so it doesn't fall off. But I just want that really like draped like fishing net. And I thought that was the perfect final touch there. It is a little longer than my frame. And so I do go in there and just trim that up a little bit. And I made this to hang in my dining room, which of course is beach themed. And this is how it turned out. And I think it's so cute. It's bigger than the canvas. And I, I really like the combination of the two projects together. I think it turned out really beachy. Okay, our next DIY is a mermaid sign DIY. I got inspired by my Facebook group. It is Crafty Beach on um, Facebook. You should come join. I'll post a link below. Um, Stephanie on there posted a DIY she made using an arrow and the little mermaid tails hanging below, and I thought it was super cute. I was trying to find a way to use these little mermaid tails because I haven't thought of anything to do with them yet. So I'm gonna go in and do some faux scales using my hot glue gun. This is the hot glue gun from the Dollar Tree. I know it's been recalled. If you have it, it has been recalled because of a fire hazard. So I kept my eyes on it like a hawk because I didn't want to start a fire, but I really needed a fine tipped hot glue gun. I guess I'm gonna to have to invest in one. And then I just kind of draw the scales on and the little lines on the bottom. And once you get the groove of it, it goes pretty fast. I'm gonna just set those aside and let that harden up and it's gonna give me a great texture for my mermaid tail. I got this idea for the mermaid scales, I think from Unicorn Dust Designs. She did like a whole, like one of the whole um, wood mermaids and she did this for the mermaid tail. And I thought it was a great idea. Um, to give a little scales to our mermaid tail. Now to paint it, I'm gonna use a combination of Caribbean blue and ivory because I'm gonna try to match that cute little mermaids have more fun canvas. That's what I'm gonna use as my sign. That's also from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. And I kinda want them to match. So I'm just going in there with a chunky brush so that I can get in all the little nooks and crannies there because we have a fantastic texture on these little mermaid tails now. I'm so glad that I did that method. It really um, added a lot of texture and detail to this project. So I got a pretty good coat on all of those. Now I'm just gonna flip them over and do a quick coat on the back as well because the little mermaid tails are gonna be hanging. Um, I don't want um, the back to be like only half painted. So just to give it a finished product look. And then I thought it needed a little distressing to bring out that beautiful detail of the mermaid scales. And so I just distress it with a little ivory and a chunky brush, just going over with a baby wipe to wipe off any excess paint. And that really brought out that beautiful detail. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that on all of them. I think that mermaids have more fun sign is so cute. And I've been trying to think of a way to use it um, regarding like instead of just sitting it on a shelf. And I think this turned out really cute. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for the idea. Again, for my Facebook group, you gotta go over there. The Crafty Beach Bums have got it going on with the beach DIYs and other DIYs. Everyone is so creative and you're gonna love all the projects. And I also post my own and when I have a new video coming out. And then I just distress the canvas just to kind of coordinate with it and make it not look so perfect. Now I'm gonna drill a couple holes in the bottom. I wanna do three holes, one for each tail. And I don't know if I'd really recommend doing it this way because when I do drill into the MDF, it kind of falls apart on the other side. The good news is that it's on the inside so you can't really tell, but you could probably get the same effect by stapling or hot gluing the twine on the back of the sign. But once I started drilling, I was committed. <laughs> and I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit with a little distressing there. To, for any of the exposed MDF there on the bottom. Now I'm gonna use some of this really thin um, Dollar Tree twine 
and like a giant needle and kind of string that on and string that through the bottom of the Little Mermaid sign and then tie it off on the inside so that it will hang down in Little Mermaid tails. Kind of looks like Mermaid had extra tails and they like just hung them up here like outfits. <laughs> I first tied it a little long, so I thought it would look better a little shorter, so I go in and just tie it off a little shorter. Now, the middle section you'll notice was covered by like a little crossbar, so when I drilled my hole through there, I kind of went in at an angle so that it would come out one side so I would be able to get that through. I would like to take the opportunity to thank you for watching our, my video today. If you like these DIYs, don't forget to like. And when you're done watching, if you could comment your favorite project below. I love reading all of your comments. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We are almost to 7,000 subscribers. So that's super exciting. I'm just going to cut off the excess twine in there. And then it didn't have a hanger, so I'm going to make it into a hanging sign just by taking some twine, tying a knot, and stapling that on. Some of you have asked what kind of stapler I have. I've had that forever. I think it's called a Power Shot stapler. Just something from the hardware store. And then the only thing I didn't really like about that sign was the mermaid was a little plain. And so I thought I would just give it a little bit extra. I didn't have a starfish that size, but I do have some of these glass decals from the Dollar Tree that kind of matches. So it's almost the same size as the starfish on there. And so I just put it on there just for a little bit more detail to that sign and a little bit of texture. Now to kind of make it kind of blend in a little bit with the sign, I do go in and just give it a quick distress like I did the rest of the canvas. And that's all there is to this DIY. I think it turned out really cute. I have this in my kitchen and I actually have it hanging above my mermaid that I made in my last shore living video and they look so cute together. This is how it looks hanging up. Aren't they cute? The tails like slightly overlap each other, but that kind of kind of keeps them in line. Okay, our next DIY. I thought I would make a like a uh, little beach house. So I'm gonna use another canvas from the Shore Living line at the Dollar Tree, one of those Shore Living houses, and one of the Shore Living stencils. I have given away several of these stencil packs, and this is the first time I'm using them, and it turned out fantastic. Now I'm just going to use the beach scene um, to cover up the house and I'm just using a razor to cut off around the staples so that I can take the fabric off of the canvas. If you can't find um, these canvases, you could use whatever you have. You could use an, a beach picture from like um, one of the Dollar Tree calendars or you could use um, scrapbook paper as well. They've been having some good deals on scrapbook paper. At Hobby Lobby I got like a whole huge pack of like ocean scenes. But the canvas itself provides a great texture so I highly recommend that way. Now the only thing on this little house is this little uh, glittery foam sticker. So I'm just using some heat to pop that off. And then I am going to cut this out, the canvas so I can use it to cover the little house. So I just lay it on top there and then draw it on, which is like an ink pen, onto the back of our canvas. And then I'm just gonna cut that out. When I start to cut it out, I'm like, oh yeah, there's like a roof line on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the outer shape here and then I will have to go in and trim that up a little bit more because I like the little roof on there. So I wanna kind of keep that and so I just flip it over because it's symmetrical and I um, use that roof as a guide to kind of draw where I need to cut and just trim that off. And that got me pretty good coverage, maybe a little under the roof line and then also trimming off the bottom. And we have a beautiful beach scene for our house. And I thought that'd be a great background to do a painting um, for the stencil. So uh, just like before, we're gonna do like a really 
thick layer of Mod Podge because that canvas is pretty thick to make sure that that stays down. So just going all over the front part of the house and then laying the little ocean picture on there. It's so cute. I love these little houses. I've DIY'd several and I, did, I think I had some from last year too. But they're great because you can always cover them like this and use them for any kind of season. And I did release a best of Crafty Beach of my favorite coastal 4th of July DIYs from last year. So you'll have to check those out. Um, and I will have to get started on this year. Now the stencil, the short living stencil, I just tape it on at the top. Um, it's kind of bigger than the house. And I'm just going to kind of hold it on um, while I go in. And I'm just using um, some of those little foam daubers from the Dollar Tree and daubing all over. I'm just going to use one coat. I think that's going to be fine. And the stencils worked really well. Some of the design was um, a little off of it, but I just went ahead and did as much as I could fit on there and then dried the paint. And this is how it turned out. Isn't that cute? I love these stencils. They're so cute. If you can find them, definitely pick some up. And I think I might have... I might have extra. I might be able to do another giveaway. Then I'm just going to distress the whole thing with just some ivory paint, including the little roof line, um, to kind of make that look a little bit more like driftwood color, and because it was kind of a dark wood, and just wiping off any excess with a baby wipe, trying to get like an even level of distress on our little meet me by the sea house. And especially doing a lot of distressing on the roof to lighten that up. Then to replace the little decoration at the top, I'm gonna use one of these little wooden sea turtles from the Shore Living at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna give it a quick paint job. I'm gonna make that ivory so that I'll kind of contrast against the blue and match the painting on the sign. And then I'm also gonna go in and just give it a quick distress just to kind of make it go with the rest of the vibe for the little house. And he is going to be the final touch on our little house. I think he turned out really cute. Um, I go back over it with a little bit more ivory because I kind of went a little crazy with that Antique Wax by Waverly. And then just glue that on. And it's done. I think it turned out so cute. I have it on the top of my hall tree here. And it totally goes with my vibe of my house. Okay, up next is one of these starfish wreath forms from the Shore Living line at the Dollar Tree. It's like their star one, but it's like got the little curved rays, which makes it look even more like a starfish. And then I'm gonna use a package of this nautical rope. I only needed one package um, for this wreath. Now, the reason I only needed one package, I know a lot of people wrap these, but I thought I would try to do something a little bit different. So I'm gonna basically try to cover all of the wire with rope. So just leaving the rope intact as is, it's kind of like the, it's not the really thick rope, it's kind of the medium width rope from the Dollar Tree. And I think it's 11 feet long and I had plenty to do all of this, all of the lines. So just doing um, a section at a time, I do like a layer of hot glue on top of the wire and then lay the rope on top. Easy peasy. So. Just going all around the outer edges first. And then all the inner like lines, I'm gonna cover that with rope as well. And then we'll try to decorate this guy. Um, I do like, I saw somebody on um, our Facebook group wrapped it with like the rope, it looked like maybe the rope unwound and then decorated it and that turned out really pretty as well. I was kind of going for a different version, maybe probably an easier version. <laughs> so um, now we're going to start working on the inner rows. On this first one, I kind of go all the way across. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I don't really want like all that overlap there in the center if I were to do that on all of them. So I do go ahead and go back and cut the center out. And then from then on, I just kind of um, only do up to the center and make the pieces like individual. I found that worked better. So I just start cutting and gluing until we have all of our wire reform filled up. 
And this would be really cute if you had like um, a color door, um, the contrast of the white. I'm actually gonna use this reef inside. I have the perfect wall for this. It, it turns out super beachy. <laughs> So just finishing up all of the wire and I had plenty in that one package to cover the whole thing. Now it gets a little messy on the back so I'm just using my heat gun to try to um, melt off any excess glue. And then I thought we could cover that center section with one of these Dollar Tree Shore Living um, sand dollars. And they're a little bit gray so I thought, I always think they look a little better if I paint them ivory. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna paint it ivory to try to make it look a little bit more realistic. They do a pretty good job on these. They look pretty good. Besides the color needs a little brightening, I think. And then I'm just going to attach that to the center. It's gonna cover up all the rough edges of the rope there and cover up that center section. And it's gonna give us a nice beachy feel as well. Now, once I have that on, I thought seashells. So these are the seashells that come in the little tiny bottles at Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna use all the same kind to decorate this. This really pretty like white with brown spotted one. I don't know what they're called, but I'm gonna go ahead and do like a pattern all the way around. So I'm gonna do um, a shell on each one of the short rows, kind of having the cone point inwards so it won't take away from the, the shape of the starfish. And you know how starfish can have like bumps on them? I was, that's what I was kind of thinking when I was adding the seashells to these. I don't want to add too many, but I wanted to add enough to do like a design. So about halfway down one of the rays, I do one and then at the tip, I do another one. And I'm just gonna do that on all five of the little starfish rays. And I think that provided a good level of decoration. You could always add more or a different kind of shell to make it your taste. You could even do a colored shell too to bring in some color. And I really like the coastal vibes of that. So um, I go ahead and make just a simple hanger, just some twine. I'm just gonna do it around one of the rays since it's open like that and tie a knot off. Now, I was thinking it needed color. Um, so I got some of this fabric at the Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree. It's this teal sheer fabric. And I thought that might be good to cover the back of it to bring in some color to the project. So it's not very wide. It's not wide enough to definitely cover the back of the starfish, but I thought I could probably piece it together and make it work. Now it's pretty sheer, so I keep kind of sampling to see um, how many layers I need to kind of give me the color that I want. And I went with three layers. That gave me quite a bit of blue. It's a very subtle touch, but I think it turns out really cute. So I think that piece is gonna cover almost half of it. And I am just going to attach that with hot glue without cutting first, just putting the whole thing on there. And we'll go back and trim later. And I'm so glad I did this. I think it, it really added a nice touch. I really like the, the bang of color. I guess you could always paint the rope too. And then this piece, I do three layers again. Um, it's almost big enough, but not quite to cover the whole, um, the rest of it. So I'm just gonna attach that piece with hot glue. I'm trying not to overlap because that's gonna make like that part a little bit darker there in the middle. So I try to get it as close as I can without leaving like a gap in between. And there was like maybe one layer that was overlapped. Um, so I just go in and kind of trim that up a little bit to try to make it the same um, color of blue. And then here at the end, I just have to do um, that little tiny piece that was left. Now we're ready, we can just trim this. I am just using my fabric scissors and cutting as close to the wire as I can get. And I am so glad that I added the blue. I think it really added a special touch and made it look a little bit more unique. If you, I would love to see what you've done with your starfish wreath if you've made one. Um, be sure to post it over on our Facebook group. And also I am on Instagram and my name over there is Crafty Beach on YouTube. I'll post a link below to that. I've been doing a lot of reels. If you're short on time, you can still get my DIYs. 
And this is how it looks in my house. I think it turned out so sweet. What do you think? It's definitely unique. Okay, the next DIY is a whale. I got this whale mirror at the Dollar Tree. It's not chore living. This was like actually like in like the regular aisle. At my store, it's kind of the aisle that has like, I kind of call it the teenage girl aisle, if you know what I mean. It's got like a lot of stuff that a teenage girl would love to have in the room or a child. And so I thought we could try to make it look like a blue wood um, whale for decor. So I just have blue, it's a light blue cardstock that I just have around my house. I'm not sure where I got this, maybe Staples. The package said Ocean, it had all different kinds of shades of blue. And I just lay the whale on there and draw with an ink pen the shape all the way around. And then I am simply gonna cut this cardstock out. You can use whatever you have, scrapbook paper or whatever. I really like the cardstock because it's really thick and it's gonna keep its structure. Um, you could probably even do this with fabric. The mirror doesn't look very nice, but we're gonna, we're gonna mask it and try to make it look like a wooden whale, like a piece of decor. So we got it all cut out, almost a perfect cut. I do have to trim it in a couple places. And I thought about doing strips for the sides, but I decided against it. I kind of like the blue and the white together. So I wanted to make it look like wood. So I'm just gonna use a dry chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and just a tiny bit of antique wax by Waverly. And working in one direction, we are just gonna do a very light distress to try to make it look like wood. And I really like the effect of that. Now to make it a little bit more durable, a little less papery, I'm gonna go over and start giving it a layer of Mod Podge. It's gonna kind of seal that down and give us a little bit more of a durable surface. And there's kind of a lip around that mirror that it's gonna be perfect to attach this paper to it. The mirror is just gonna stay on the inside. Like that. Now I'm gonna attach it with hot glue because this cardstock is pretty durable. I think it's gonna hold up well with the hot glue all the way around and just laying that on top. This project was so easy and I think it turned out so cute. So if you see one of these whales, definitely pick it up. Now I thought the contrast of the white plastic sides um, was kind of um, not really going with the vibe of the front. So I'm gonna use um, that dry brush and some more of that antique wax by Waverly and do a very light distress on the white part as well. Again, I like the two-tone, but you could always cover the sides as well with little strips. And you kind of got to be careful um, if you wipe it off because with the plastic, all of the antique wax by Waverly wants to come off. But once it's dry, it's pretty good. So I just distress it lightly. And there is our little whale. I think he's looking super cute. I think he needs just a few more touches. I'm going to give him a very light distress of ivory as well to bring in a little bit of white with that beachy distress. And then to make it a little bit more durable, I do go in with another layer of Mod Podge just to make sure that paper is good and sealed. And that's all there is to this DIY. It was so easy and it turned out so cute. I have it with my beach decor in my living room and I kind of paired it with the shell and a starfish and I think it turned out really cute. There we go, one little whale. And this is how it looks on my shelf. Isn't it sweet? I think it looks so much better than it did as a mirror. Okay, our last DIY, I got one of these little galvanized metal shore living signs at the Dollar Tree with the seahorse and three of these chunky slats of wood from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. And I thought we could make a sign out of these. So I got three that were the same length. They are the thicker kind, so I think they're gonna make a great sign that won't have any trouble standing on its side. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and glue those together. I'm just using Gorilla Glue hot glue 
and putting the wood pieces together. One of those pieces was a little rugged looking, but that's okay. That'll totally go with my coastal farmhouse vibes. And then just gluing the second one on there too. Trying not to use too much hot glue because I don't want it to really like leak out between the pieces. But what an easy sign. I love working with this craft wood from the Dollar Tree. It's so versatile, I love it. You can make any kind of sign or anything custom. And if you could even cut it if it was too big. Now I want this to be blue. I'm gonna mix together Caribbean blue and ivory to give me that really pretty beachy shade of blue. And we're just gonna paint this sign. So not really worried about like the cracks in between. It kind of gives like a wood slat feel to the sign. And then I'm also gonna paint like the top and the sides, any area there that would be visible. Not gonna worry about the back. I'm just gonna leave the tags on back there. I think that's fine. And then we are gonna go in and lightly distress this um, just with a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and some ivory acrylic. Kind of going all over, wiping off any excess with a baby wipe. And I don't forget, I'm also gonna distress like the top and the sides as well. Give it a nice little beachy look. Then I thought we could attach that little galvanized metal sign to the front, but first I wanted to give it a little bit of a DIY. They have these in the starfish, the anchor, and the seahorse. So this is the seahorse one. I'm just gonna start by taking off the rope handle, and then I thought we could paint it. I wanna use one of those uh, Shore Living glass stickers to decorate it, but you could always use Cricut vinyl. I was just trying to use supplies from the Dollar Tree to make it a little bit easier. So I am just using ivory acrylic and going all over, even including the little seahorse and doing a coat. Now, chalk paint might work better because I did have to do quite a few coats of acrylic to get this galvanized metal um, covered because I was trying not to see any of that metal show through and also doing the little scroll parts on the side. And I do add a little white to my last coat to brighten it up a little bit. The background on my glass sticker that I'm gonna use, you'll see it here in a minute, kinda had like a frosty white background. So I didn't really want that to be visible, so that's why I did that. Now for the seahorse, I'm just using a little makeup sponge and some of that Caribbean blue to give us a nice little teal seahorse for it. And this is the glass sticker. This one says, meet me by the sea. And it's kind of a square shaped sticker. Technically, most of it would fit, but I wanna fill up the whole sign. So I thought that we could cut it into pieces and kind of piece it together on there and make it cover more of the sign. So I'm carefully gonna cut the meet me by the off. And then the C, I'm gonna have to kind of sacrifice that little starfish, I think, but that's okay. And I'm gonna kind of sit them next to each other like that to fill up the sign. And with your Cricut, or you can hand paint with a paint pen, you can put anything on these. But I kind of really like the effect of painting them. I think that really brightened the sign up a lot. So these are great. You just peel and stick these little glass stickers and they do perfect on any kind of surface that I've tried them on. And if you get it on there a little off, you can always peel them off and reposition them. Kind of like removable vinyl. Now I wanna try to get that sealed down a little bit better. So I'm just gonna go over all of it with a little bit of Mod Podge. Now I wanna attach this to the front. And so I kinda wanted to give it that same beachy vibe. So I'm gonna distress it as well with just a little bit of ivory paint over that glass sticker. It kind of breaks up the paint a little bit, makes it kind of look a little bit more hand painted. And then I'm also gonna distress our little seahorse over here as well. He's super cute. Now I thought it would be cute to go in and distress with a little bit of that blue color as well that we used on the sign, kind of a reverse distress. And just using my chunky brush, just kind of distressed the ivory with blue like we distressed the blue with the, um, with the ivory. Just to kind of coordinate the two signs together. And then 
there's holes on the top of that sign that had the hanger and I'm actually going to use those holes to attach that to the front of that sign. You kind of have to be careful when you're distressing the sticker part there because it kind of wants to come off a little bit when you use the baby wipe. I get it on there and then I am thinking I don't really like the red and so I'm just using um, a turquoise paint pen. I think I got this at Target and I am just drawing the letters on there that were red just to kind of make this all blues and whites kind of make it a little bit better. But you, if you like the red or the pink color, definitely leave that on there. I love these little decals. They are so easy to work with. And then I give it a light distress of ivory as well to kind of make it match the rest of it. Now I thought I could just attach that. I found some screws that were pretty small. And so I just screw those in each of the holes. That way um, it covers up the hole and it attaches it to the wood, but you could totally hot glue that down as well. Now the screws I found were a little bit shiny, and so I do distress them slightly with a little bit of ivory to kind of make them blend in a little bit more with the sign. And this is how it turned out. Oh, thank you so much for watching, and here is the final reveal. Bye everyone. Dreamers of the